This is the Vox Live Polaris, uh, an unboxing and uh, walkthrough through their printer made by Flashforge, um, a pretty well known company, as you can see here through the product details. Found that out. So, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be going through all the parts and all the pieces that come with the Vox Live Polaris. As you can see, you get all the standard stuff power adapters, cables. You also get an information package containing warranty information, instructions. You also get um, a pretty quality USB key. Um, it's made by SanDisk. And on it, it has uh, software programs for Chi2 Box and a Voxel, Voxel Print, which is their own proprietary slicer. My experience is with Chi2 Box and uh, Voxel Print. Um, Chi2 Box is actually quite intuitive, so if you're used to any 3D printing, um, it's a great program to start off with. Uh, I'd suggest you use that. This is just some information on warranty cards, instructions. We have a close up of the SanDisk USB with all the programs and a sample prints is actually included on there as well. Uh, this is just a paint filter that you're actually going to need for later when you're. Now just a word of caution they only give you one filter, and this filter you're going to need to strain out your resins after you print it. Now it's not a regular filter, it's a very fine mesh that you're going to need. To find if you find if you're looking for paint filters, so you can't just use a coffee filter. Now they do give you some other stuff in the boxes as well. Um, for example, they give you a nice metal scraper that you're going to need to use to scrape off your prints off the print bed. Now they also give you a plastic scraper as well. See there. In the packages, you'll also receive some vinyl gloves um, or nitrile gloves. Make sure that you use your gloves, especially with the resin. The resin is very toxic and it's not good for your skin. Uh, you'll receive adjustment hex keys and some replacement screws as well. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit through this just to get through all the unboxing and the uneventful pulling out of the printer of the box. Now everything comes very well packed. Lots of styrofoam, lots of padding. I'm just going to pull this off right here. So. I am just pulling off the top and as you can see the assembly is actually very well padded so you don't have to worry about shifting or you don't have to worry about the rails getting damaged especially in transit. Now I'm also going to be pulling out right here is the build plate. Uh, unique design, it's actually concave on the top and flat on the bottom. Great for letting the resin drip off unlike some of the other printers that you can get on the market that are flat that you actually have to let it drip to get all the resin off the top. Um, we also have me pulling out and the, the tray, which is actually screwed on, which is screwed on by two screws on the side. The tray is metal. It's not plastic. And the FEP, FEP film, which is the layer on the bottom, which the um, resin sticks to, is actually pre-installed. I haven't yet seen if I can get a replacement vat if I need one or a secondary vat if I'd like to choose to have one. Here we see the 2K LCD screen. It is, from what I've been told, very uniform in its light. So when it actually shines the UV light through the screen, you get no dead spots. Everything uh, fits pretty well tight. Uh, the tolerances are good. Everything, uh, like the base is made out of metal. It's very well constructed. Now you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you a picture of how the printer looks like when it's all built. The next part I'm gonna show you is a leveling and, and take you through an actual print. Now what I'm doing here is actually I'm loosening the screws on the uh, build plate so that when I hit the home axis, it'll actually be loose. And there's a reason for that, is that if you have any experience on FDM printers and other types of uh, filament printers, leveling a bed is a pain. Now to level the bed on this is super easy. All you have to just do is make sure that your build plate is loose, you hit the home button, and it actually brings the whole build plate down. Now the reason for the paper is that that is just the the spec that is needed so that you get proper contact with the FEP film and the uh, and, and and the build plate. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually holding it down to push it again so that I get a nice proper tight uh, fitting when it when the build plate goes down on the FEP film. The paper is used to measure that. And what you want to do is make sure that it is tight enough to pull, but not to push in. So what I'm doing now is tightening the ball head on the build plate. Some other printers on the market 
have this configuration and some have uh, like a square build, uh, square adjustment. The pros and cons for it, I'm not too sure, but from my experience so far, uh, the ball joint system actually works actually quite well. Now what you see me doing here is actually just testing the tension on the paper, on the build plate, and seeing if there's enough friction to make sure that I got the level properly. Now I did omit one step here. After that point where you test for friction, you're actually supposed to hit, you go back one menu and you're supposed to hit the zero button. So it zeroes the z-axis so that this way the printer knows that that's more than it's properly calibrated. What I'm doing here now is actually um, adjusting the z-axis so I can fit the build, uh, the build vat and screw it in to make sure that it fits properly onto the printer, as you can see what I'm doing here. Now it just slides in. Now, as you can see, I, I'm just highlighting the tape areas where I taped on the LCD. So this way, it when the build plate goes down, it does produce a lot of frick, it does produce a lot, a lot of suction from what I'm told, and this will actually help your parts not to stick too much on the FEP film. Now, the next part of this process is to actually add the resin to the vat, and the vat on this printer particularly is good because it actually gives you a max fill line. Sometimes you can overfill it, and that's one thing you don't want to do is to have resin all over the place. Uh, another thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're using gloves, as you can see me using them there, because the resin is quite nasty, especially on skin. You also want to make sure that you're using this in a well-ventilated area. The resin is has, ha, has a lot of fumes, and it's not pleasant, depending on which resin you use, some are stronger, some are lighter. So you want to make sure it's in a fully ventilated area, um, you want to make sure you, you have a ventilation hood or some kind of exhaust. Next part I'm doing is now is just setting up the print. I'm going through the menus and choosing it from the on-screen selection and it actually shows you a little picture of each of the models that are actually on the USB stick which you can see uh, that is seated on the right side of the printer and here we go. Now you'll see the print head coming down. I'm just speeding it up to make it a little bit faster for you to watch. And what it'll do is you'll see the printhead get submerged into the vat. And now you'll see it fills up pretty quick, so that's why you make sure you do not overfill it. The next part I'm going to show you is what the screen looks like after you've started printing. Now you'll get some information. You'll get the actual total build time. You'll actually get um, the elapsed time. You'll actually get the number of layers that uh, this print is, the information of the file, and the actual um, screen of what's happening on the LCD. This next part is actually some of the things that you'll need for post-processing. This is a pickle cup. You use it to store pickles, but from what I've been reading, it's actually really great to wash prints because you can lift out the print without actually putting your hand into the liquid. Now in this box, you'll actually get um, one paint filter. Now you'll show you what you're going to be using that for. You use that to strain the resin. You only get one. So after your first print, if you don't have another one, you, you got to go on and buy one. Now, the alternative I found is a metal reusable coffee filter. Uh, it actually works really well. It's actually, the mesh is really, really fine. It works almost exactly as the, the paper paint filter that they give you, and it's reusable. Now, you can put your resin back into the original container, but I've been using two. From what I've been reading is that you shouldn't mix old with new. But my past ex from the experiences I've been having, it's been working good. Now, here are some of the prints. Um, this is my first print. It's uh, Castle Rook. The next model is a little bit more detailed. I wanted to make sure I tried a new model uh, with supports that was a little bit more detailed, but not to use too much resin. So it's printed small. Quite good results. The next model is quite much bigger. It's actually almost five inches tall. Um, it's actually a Deadpool bust, which is uh, which I found on the internet. Really nice detail. Worked out amazing. Um, I'd suggest that you really watch the videos, especially on how to do supports and get some information on how to do it properly. As a first time printer, especially in SLA, um, I feel that Voxlab really did a good job on this printer. I got some really good quality results, but not after some learning, and I would highly definitely recommend it. So subscribe and like, and hopefully you'll get some more reviews soon. Thanks.